You're watching Hindustan Times and I'm Aditi Prasad. I'm joined by industry leader and former CEO of Britannia Industries, Mr. Sunil Alag. The question on everyone's mind is whether the rupees 20 lakh crore stimulus package announced by the Modi government is enough to bring the Indian economy back from the brink. And that, Mr. Alag, is going to be my first question to you. 20 lakh crores, 10% uh, of India's GDP, is it enough? Uh, you know, when uh, the Prime Minister announced it, I think he laid out the vision for the country and I was very excited about it because 20 lakh crores is a huge sum of money. It's 10% of our GDP, much more than what we expected was about 15 lakh crores. He's gone all the way up to 20 lakh. Of course, it's included whatever the RBI has already done. So you can say it's about they had already given out money till about 6 or 7 lakh crores. So there was 13 lakh crores still to be distributed. And I was quite looking forward to it. Very excited about what the government was going to do. Uh, the details yeah. announced by Mr. Peter Ramano last three days. Uh, you know, the four o'clock pressers, uh, as we've come to get to know the, them now. First day, uh, she, of course, laid out the ground rules for one industry. The second day, it was the MSMEs. The third day, uh, it was the, the migrant workers. Uh, today, it was the agricultural labor. What do you think of these tranches of announcements that have been You know, uh, my priorities before the 20 lakh, before Nirmala Sitaraman came in, and I must list it out, I was first talking about the poor and the needy and the migrant workers were top of mind for me, followed by the MSMEs, followed by the middle income group, and then followed by industry. I think they've gone uh, not exactly as per what I expected, but They've done a lot. Let me first finish by saying that they've done a lot for farmers. I mean, I don't think the agricultural sector has anything to complain about. And nor does the MSME sectors in the sense that they have really gone out of the way to help the MSMEs. My right. only area of uh, concern was that the migrant workers which were going back should not have gone back. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, them going back was was something that all the state governments should have prevented because you are going to need the migrant workers to kickstart the economies. All of them were required for their construction, for everything else. And now that they've gone back, what are the government plans on getting them to return to work is the real question which has not got answered by, uh, by anybody in the government. Also, uh, I thought that for two months, only for two months, huh, they could have done for May and June only they could have raised that 500 rupees a month to about 4,000 rupees a month. I think it would have cost the government only 10,000 crores. And I'm not talking about giving, giving it for the whole year, but for two months at least when the migrant workers were getting back and all the poor were to be required, I was expecting them to give at least that much money for just two months. But that's been a bit of a disappointment for me. And uh, otherwise, look, if they've, they've given away a lot of loans, they want the MSMEs to get back, the only other area, if I could think of, was the later, of course, was a concern because right from the beginning, I think the government has worried about the supply side. And, and that's one way of looking at the business because the economists and you need to get a balance in because the supply side, they've taken, done a wonderful job. They are giving everybody money. They want people to start construction. They want people to start in real estate. Everybody has opportunities to, to start. But for me, the critical thing, being from the consumer industry, the critical thing is, unless you get demand, all of them are going right. to come back within three to four months and say, look, I've, thank you so much, but I'm not producing enough. That's the oil in the engine, which is missing so far. According to them, they've given money. They've given money to the consumers as well, but indirectly mm -hmm. by reducing the TDS and so expecting the consumer to now start calculating what they've got and maybe start spending. But uh, I'm not so sure that they will do that immediately. And that's my worry. And 90% of the stimulus, uh, you know, give and take a few percentages points uh, is almost over. What about India Inc? What, are the, what were the expectations of India Inc from this stimulus package? And do you think there's enough money left to maneuver that those demands in? See, India Inc. was always asking for more money to start industry. And therefore, I've been saying, well, I'm not, although I'm from industry, I was saying, look, asking for money is all right and asking for loans and paying off the wages and all is great. But unless the consumers start spending, India Inc. is going to be groping because they will say, all right, I've got the money, I've got the loans, I've got the machines going. And maybe in a couple of months, even they've got the workers. But unless there's a demand for their products, uh, I don't know 
whether India Inc. is going to be fully satisfied. I think people are going to go back and say, look to the consumers that they've got to start spending. See, this money which they are giving to the rural markets, which is that 5,000 rupees, which I was asking for two months and the agricultural, if there's a good crop and the infrastructure comes in, then the rural demand will go up. But the urban poor or the urban lower middle class has does not understand as yet what they've got and what they haven't got. That hasn't been clarified because, look, they don't understand these macro figures that I'm giving you 7,000 crores, this is 10,000 crores. Everybody is going to start groping around what is in it for me, for me to start spending. And I think the government should exactly. clarify that. You know, they should start clarifying okay, me, what does it mean for an individual? Yeah. Okay. So I, I just want to, uh, you know, just move back. You know, you talked about the migrants. You talked about uh, MSMEs and the push for the MSME sector, uh, you know, this from the stimulus package being fantastic. Uh, but the opposition and uh, quite a few other uh, of my learned colleagues have argued that merely loans uh, or and liquidity may not be enough as a stimulus uh, package. You know, cash transfers would have done the trick better. In fact, but this government's dharma and the prime minister seems to believe and think that it should be empowerment over entitlement, you know, no doles. Um, and yeah. while it might sound politically very brave, do you think it's it's politically smart? No, I think it's politically smart because he has also said about Manrega, unless you work, I'm not going to give you any money. And that's worked even for the poor farmers yeah. there. And they're providing a lot of food. That's why yeah. I'm saying for the farmers, they've given a lot. But the middle income group in the urban lower middle income group is still groping and saying, what's in it for me? And there's about 300 million of them all over India. And they are not very clear as to anything has been provided to them to generate demand. Because, see, just because you give them money or give them an entitlement, they're not going to start spending. It's a question of building confidence and building trust before they start spending. Right now, my, my belief is that even if you gave them entitlement, they would save for a rainy day. I mean, the monsoons are around the corner, and I don't mean it as a pun. But they will say, look, let's yeah. save. Let's see what's happening around before I start spending. So there will be extra spending going on in certain products. Food products like biscuits are going to grow. They're already growing because people will spend in that. And, you know, even in the white goods, I wish, you know, the only way to have done it was to incentivize the purchase. For instance, if you want to say if you buy a television set, which is going up right now, but if you want to buy a fridge or you want to buy an AC, well, we are giving you uh, we are giving you maybe 10 percent off or 20 percent off your tax if the amount of money that you spend. So that is where I think it would have been a better idea because you, would have, you need to think of it. These are drastic times and you cannot do just incremental stuff, which which most of the government are doing. You know, these are not going to cost much. Maybe they could have reduced GST a little bit in a number of products and brought about a flat rate of 12 percent or whatever. That means they are saying all 18 becomes 12. All that becomes less than uh, less than 12 have one flat rate. I don't know what the figures would work out to, but something like that, because none of this is cast in stone, you know, because it's only for this year. Next year, they could have gone back. If the economy starts booming again, you can go back to whatever you want to do. You can get back to your old GST. You can get back to a number of things which you've started off. So this is not none of these measures which I'm suggesting is really cast in stone that once you've done it, you can't take it away.